Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this one. We're going to take a look at a new series on PHP. We're going to talk about certification. We're going to talk about uh, the initialization file. We're going to talk about how to get this set up, writing your first script. And we're going to talk about how to change some of the settings and get HTML and PHP embedded and working together. This will be the first of many videos in the series and you don't want to miss a series, guys. Once again, guys, be sure to stick around for the entirety of the video as I give most of my insights towards the end of the lesson. All right, with that being said, let's jump in. All right, so this is the beginning series for learning PHP. So before we get started, I want you guys to be aware that there is a little bit of a requirement, so you will need to know a little bit of HTML. I've started that series for you guys, so you can check that out. And that's an ongoing series as well. And what it will do, it will try to correlate or run parallel with the PHP series. So I'm going to open my browser and we're just going to take a look at a resource that you guys will find very useful. It's called php.net. As you can see in the headliner, PHP covers everything from your basic blog to some of the most powerful websites in the world. So I'm just going to provide a really quick general purpose uh, definition of what PHP is. So it's basically a scripting language and it was originally conceived by Rasmus Lerdorf in 1995, a fellow Canadian. He co-authored the scripting language, which was then picked up by a bunch of other individuals. And it's been open source and free ever since. And it's very powerful. It originally stood for personal homepage. So PHP 8 has provided a lot of powerful changes and has had a lot of security and stability to the language. Some of the most notable things are performance, speed, and security. So what you could do with PHP, we're going to open up another tab here. So you could go and get your PHP certification and get certified in this if you like. Really at the end of the day, what certification does, it helps separate you from some of your peers. And when you're applying for a job or you're going for a specific position, the certification uh, may help you get that edge on the competition. Also, it's good to be certified because it also helps you write uh, code that is to standard. And as of this version right now, I think we're looking at 2017 to um, currently 2018. So I think the exam will be somewhere around on PHP 7.4 and above. But a lot of the things I'm going to teach you guys and a lot of the things I'm going to go over, it's going to help you guys, um, you know, deal with some of those core concepts. So throughout the series, we're going to understand the syntax and the structural elements of PHP. We're going to make use of the manual. And what the manual will do, it'll help you, you know, look up references and basis syntax and some expressions, security issues, and things like that. So you'll know how to correctly apply various, uh, you know, control workflows. You will organize your code into reasonable functions. You'll accomplish tasks using, uh, you know, arrays and PHP file systems. We'll touch on validation forms and we'll do some things around databases. So this is not an end all, do all PHP uh, series. There's a lot to learn. Uh, there's a lot of benefits of getting certified as well, but I'm gonna try to walk you through as much as I can around this extremely popular scripting language. Hey guys, what's up? Kevin here. I just wanna give a big shout out to my subscribers. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Be sure to give the videos a like, a thumbs up, and start a conversation. Much appreciated. Now let's get back to the video. So I've just really just created a simple project, just a folder, and right here it's called just PHP. So I've just basically made a folder inside of the directory where I'm serving up my PHP web server. And if you have questions on that, be sure to check out Valet, be sure to check out the videos on Homebrew, and those will get you up to speed. And I'm just gonna CD into that directory. And inside that directory, I just have a folder for images, some CSS, and an index.php file. And as you can see over here, I'm just using the latest version of PHP. You don't have to have the latest version installed, but if you're using version seven or above, I think you should be okay. As you can see right now, this is a pretty simple, straightforward project. I've just created an index.php file. And if you want to integrate the PHP scripting language, the files in question do have to have an extension with the .php. It's slightly different than if we were to create a file, say like index.html. So if we have this file here, we couldn't really process PHP inside of this file. So if we're working with PHP, the files do have to end in a .php for now. Before we write our first PHP script, the other thing I want to mention is, now that we have a development server up and running, we also need a good IDE or code editor. So you can use Visual Studio's code. In this case, I'm using PHP Storm, but you can use Sublime or anything like that. You can even use Notepad++. But I recommend getting a code editor that supports PHP or has additional extensions that help support the language. If you want to check out some of the things, you can check out the Visual Studio's code part of this channel and see how some of those things can help you, such as live server and getting some of those extensions set up. So autocomplete, 
built-in function references, and code folding will help you a lot in this, guys. Once you have your IDE or scripting editor, we'll start to write our first script. So you'll need this left chevron question mark PHP. So what I've created here is PHP tags. This will basically tell the server that anything enclosed or between these two tags will be treated as PHP code. Now my editor is squawking because if there's nothing else besides these two tags here, I technically don't need this, right? So it's kind of a redundant. So you could get away with just this if there is just PHP with inside this file. For now, I'm just gonna ignore that and I'm gonna keep it like this. So we're just gonna echo out a simple message and we're gonna use the word echo and the message will just be, you know, this is our first PHP script. And we'll end this with a semicolon. So let's go check this out in our browser. Now in our browser, we're going to go to our project and in this case, it's php.code, okay? So this is set up in a specific way. So if you guys are following the Valet tutorials on the channel and all the other videos, this will all make sense. As you can see, this is our first PHP script has been echoed inside of our browser. And it's the same thing that is based here. If we were to remove this, because it's just PHP at the moment, we still get the same results. Now let's just jump to php.net for a moment and we'll search up echo. And it gives us a pretty good description of what Echo is. So basically, without getting too verbose, is that Echo is a language construct. It is built into the PHP language. And its job is to echo out or print out this text. Now we're gonna quickly echo out another function. And the one we're gonna use is PHP info. And we're gonna close that by adding a semicolon towards the end. And we'll do a quick refresh. You can see that here's our echo script and then we've echoed out this function and this function does a bunch of things as this will be kind of the first initial step to show that php is working correctly i mean this gives us a good representation that we know php is working but when this is up we can get a clear indication of some of the functionality and things that are going on in our php environment and settings one thing i do want you to pay attention to is this part right here so if you're using Homebrew and you're following along, you will see that this is the path to where our php.ini file is. And the php.ini file is where we configure PHP and we have a bunch of settings. Now this may be different depending on how you have your version of PHP set up. If you took a different approach, the loaded configuration file output will be slightly different. Since I'm using Homebrew, this is the path to my ini file. Now that we have this path, I'm just going to open this inside of PHP Storm. So, and here's the file open inside of PHP Storm. You could do the same thing and open inside of Visual Studio's code or any other IDE or code editor you choose. Initially, it just tells you what it's about. It says, hey, right here, this file is responsible for many of the configurations and aspects of PHP's behavior. Now, some of these behaviors may have been modified depending on your setup, but I do wanna make sure that we have some common ground. I'm gonna do a quick search for error underscore reporting. There's some default values that are set for PHP within the INI file. In this case, there are two instances. I wanna go down here and I wanna make sure that this is set to E underscore all. And this is written in uppercase and it is case sensitive, meaning that it should be in all caps because it is a PHP constant. If you're a little more advanced, you could change some of these things to like the highest level available as far as error reporting goes. But for now, just leave it to E underscore all. And the next one that we'll look for is we're gonna look for display underscore errors, and we want this to be on. This is pretty essential for debugging mistakes inside of your scripts. If we were to turn this off by just typing in the word off here, and then we were to go to our PHP script, and I will type something like this, and I'll make a mistake. And then we'll jump back to our browser, and I'll give it a refresh. You'll notice that the page is completely blank. You're kind of left clueless, as to what is the possible cause for the error, like what's happening with this page and why is it blank. So back in our initialization file, I will just turn this back to on and I'll go back to our script and I'll just undo this. Note that there are various other features that you can turn off or on inside of the INI file. So for instance, if you're working with something like file uploads, you might want this feature to be on. If you're logging errors, I have this to being off, but the default is set to be on. I just don't want my hard drive, you know, filled with a lot of log errors for now. The other quick thing I want to take a look at is extensions. I'm just going to type a semicolon and I'm going to type out the word extensions. You will see that there are various extensions that could be turned on or off depending on what you're doing. And to turn an extension on or off, you really just have to uncomment it. So remove the actual semicolon and then that will turn that extension to be on or off. 
Now, when you save these settings, depending on how you have your setup, you may have to restart PHP for some of these settings to be applied. So that's pretty much it for the INI file, but I want you to know where it is and then note that you can modify those PHP settings. The other thing we could do is we can echo something like say the PHP version, the same thing. And we'll end this in a semicolon. We'll save this. We'll jump back out to our browser. And actually, you know what? Let's just remove the PHP info for now because there's a lot of information there. And we'll go back to our browser and we'll refresh. And you can see that PHP does not acknowledge white space unless you make it appropriate. So we'll get into that a little bit later. But for now, I'm going to give it a little bit of space. And you can see that we're currently working on 8.1.11. But I want to show you one more thing. So this is just PHP running on its own within its own page with no other integration. So meaning that I'm going to show you how this works with HTML. So for now, I'm just going to create a really quick snippet. We now have HTML inside of our index.php file. If I was to provide an H1 tag, which is a heading tag, if you're not sure what these tags are, guys, do check out the HTML series and get caught up on that. And I write something like, just say hello world. I'll save this, jump back out to the browser. You will now see that HTML has been applied to this .php file. Now, if you want to echo something inside of HTML, you do have to call the PHP tags. I'm just going to type, you know, this is generated by HTML. And then I'm going to provide another tag. In this case, I'm just going to use an H2. And then I'm going to use the PHP tags. I'm going to use the echo tag that we did before. So part of that language construct, I'm going to wrap that in quotes. I'm also going to embed another P tag, another HTML element. And I'm going to say this is made with PHP. I'm going to jump back out to the browser and do a refresh. As you can see, this is the H1 here. And this is the one that is made with the echo construct. Now, if we were to inspect our page and all I did there guys was I just right clicked, I hit inspect and it's different for each browser. Um, we get to the element section and right here, you'll see that at the end of the day, the PHP code is not visible. All we can see is what is generated. And at the end of the day, that is HTML. We do not see this echo command with inside of the browser. So the end result of the code between the PHP tags is just HTML. Do keep that in mind. So I'm going to wrap this video up and some of the key concepts to take away is that echo, it's a language construct. So it's a part of PHP. It's part of the language. PHP can be embedded inside of HTML. Note that I didn't actually include a semicolon here and it still worked. This is not something that I recommend. You should close all PHP statements with an actual semicolon. The end result of PHP code in the browser is HTML. In order to use PHP, the file should end in a .php file. And also, if you do not have any HTML or any other markup inside of your PHP file, you can get away with doing just this and then write your PHP code within this block. If you have an IDE that does auto completion for you, you will actually find that this is the case. Depending on your settings and your IDE, this may tell you that you don't actually need this. You can remove it. Also, for those of you who are familiar with PHP, there's also short tags for this directive or these tags. You could get away with writing PHP like so, just removing the actual PHP itself. My editor doesn't even like it. so. I mean, that's set up in the INI file and you can turn that on or off, but just for legibility and for anyone who's new, I'd recommend just writing out the full tag like this. The short tags are a convenience, but you trade that for readability. Okay, that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for joining me and I will see you in the next video.